Hey everyone, this is Joseph with Vert Studios, and today we're going to be going over the basics of pointers in C. Pointers in C tend to be extremely intimidating to people new to C, and I don't think this is because pointers themselves are complicated. I think it's because teachers and tutorials overall do a very poor job of explaining the simplicity of pointers. Yes, you can do some crazy things with pointers, but for the most part, pointers are really straightforward. So with some brief examples and illustrations, I hope to convey the ease of use of pointers to you. So I'll be going over what pointers are and how to use them. So what is a pointer? A pointer really is just a memory address. Let's take a simple C statement. Let's initialize an integer x to the value of 10. What happens when we do that? Well, some memory is allotted for that integer. And that memory block has an address. It's just some number that designates where it's at in memory. And let's just say for this case, the address is 200. It's possible to get the address of any variable using the ampersand operator. The output of ampersand x in this case is just 200 because that's the address. The whole point of pointers is how can we store this memory address? And we store that memory address in a certain type of variable. Just like certain values of any kind are stored in certain types of variables. If you have an integer, you're going to store that in an integer variable. Same thing with a floating point, same thing with a character. A memory address is a type, and we're going to match that with a type. In order to get the memory address of x into a variable, we do the following. The statement right here, the first part of it, the declaration part, says p will be a variable that holds the memory address of an integer. And over here on the right, the initialization part, is just the memory address of the integer x. So this matches up. If we had said instead a float p, then this wouldn't work because the types need to match up. The memory address of x is, an int is the memory address of an integer, so this will work. We don't have to initialize it just like that, though. We could just like with any other data type, separate it out. We could declare and then assign. And we would do that by doing this. Declare p as a pointer to int. That's the terminology for it. And then say p is equal to and x. So at this point, the value of p is 200 because it's the memory value of x. Oops, sorry about that. Undo. There we go. So we've been able to take a variable and get its memory address. But can we get a memory address and then get the corresponding variable? We can. And that's called dereferencing. The dereferencing operator is the asterisk. If we were to dereference the pointer p, this would be equal to dereferencing 200, because p is 200. And that's the same thing as the variable x. 
That's just by definition of what dereferencing does. Dereferencing takes a memory address and then gets you the variable at that memory address. Let's write a program to demonstrate this before we go on any further. So I'll write uh, an example 1.c file. Feel free to use Visual Studio, whatever you want. I'll be using GCC and Vim. So we said int x equals 10. And we declared p a pointer to int, which just means p is a variable that will hold the, int, the memory address of an integer. And then we can assign p the memory address of x. Let's print out some things. Let's print the value of x. And let's print the memory address of x. It's worth noting that if you don't know how to use printf, you should learn. It's really useful. Percent %p is just a flag that will serve as substitution for a pointer, and percent %d serves as substitution for an integer. So this x is going to go right here. And this is because c doesn't have a, you know, a really easy interpolation like Ruby or PHP, no, not PHP, uh, Ruby or Python. So let's compile and run this. So we see the value of x is 10, and the address of x is this. And this is not a string of characters. This is actually a number. This is a memory address that is some number. And I said that p is the same thing as the memory of x. We assigned p the memory value of x. So if I were to write and x here, I should see identical output on the last two lines. And I do. Going back to the notes, we said that if we were to dereference the memory address of something, then we get the variable. So if I were to come down here, and get the value of x, but instead of using x, I dereference p, would I get the value 10? Let's see. And yes, I do. This is because dereferencing the memory address gets you the value at that memory address. We dereference the memory address. We dereference p, which is the memory address of x. So that should just get us x. That's actually a pretty useful identity to keep in mind. If we dereference the address of a variable, we just get the variable. This is a very handy thing to keep in mind. And we'll write that out just to make sure. The value of x. I dereference the memory address of x, I should get 10 again. And I do. We've learned the basics of declaring pointer variables, and getting the memory address of variables, and dereferencing, but there's a little bit more to go. What if we were to dereference a, a pointer, and then make that part of an assignment. For example, if I were to dereference p, and then say, assign the dereference of p to 20. What would that do? Well, let's check it out. Dereference p equals 20. And let's print the value of dereference p. It makes sense if we do reference p to equal 20 and then um, we print this out, it would be equal 20. Okay, but what if we just print out the value of x after all this? 
it's 22. The value of x has actually changed. So when you dereference a pointer and then make an assignment from that, you're actually changing the value of that variable. It's a pretty simple substitution when you think about it. So we have dereferencing p equals 20. This is the same thing as dereferencing the memory address of x equals 20, which is the same thing as x equals 20, logically. That's how your logic would progress through this. So we're assigning x to 20. The difference is, though, if we were to do this dereference assignment in a function, it would actually affect the variable passed to the function. As long as we pass the address of that variable instead of just a copy of that variable. And let's illustrate that. Changing the values of function arguments. All right, let's make a simple program to do this. But before we do that, let's just draw what's going to happen. Whenever you pass a value to a function, or pass a variable to a function, what happens is a temporary copy is created for the life of that function. And then that's it. It's gone. So let's show a feeble attempt at changing the value of a variable from within a function. Let's create a function called change, let's be a void function that changes value. And we pass an integer to it. And x equals 10. Let's print the value of x. And then we change the value, we uh, run the change value function. And we're, let's change the value, actually never mind, this is wrong. Let's change the value of x. Now, change value just says x equals 15. So some people, new to C, might expect the value to change. We might expect these two th different outputs, but they're actually going to be the same. Let's compile it. And run it. Yep, so we see 10 and 10. This is because, once again, a temporary copy of x has been created here. Let's prove that. Let's verify that. Let's print the memory address of x out here, print the memory address of x in the function, and see if they're the same. The address of x outside of function. And we'll get the memory address of x for the ampersand operator. And come copy this down here. Instead, we print the address of x inside the function. And I'm telling you that these addresses are guaranteed to be different. And I'm right. See some differences here. 32C, 30C. So this x that we see that we are receiving from the argument is not the same x passed but we can explicitly pass the address of x to this function and then dereference assignment in order to change the value. Remember here, we can dereference assignment and the effect of x equals 20 has taken place. These two statements pretty much do the same thing, but dereference assignment will work inside of a function to modify uh, the variable as well. well. Here's how we do this. 
the function will take the address of an integer. So we have to change our function header to say, by putting this asterisk here, that says it's going to be accepting a memory address of an integer. So let's do that again here. And then we dereference assignment equals 15. X is still right here. We're saying that X is a memory address of an integer. So we can't just say X equals 15 because X is a memory address. We need to dereference to get to the value. We dereference to get to the variable, excuse me. So just for um, clarification, let's make that a P to show that it's a pointer. So we change value, and to pass the memory address of x to this function, we're going to use ampersand x. Let's go ahead and print out the value of x again. Let's do that before and after the change value function. Now we compile. And we run. And we see the different values. So study this, make sure you understand it. I'll try to elaborate some more, I might be rambling a bit, but I want to make sure that you really get this. So our function header says that we're accepting as an argument the memory address of an integer. And here, we're dereferencing that memory address and then assigning. So remember, dereferencing p equals 15 is the same thing as dereferencing the memory address of x equals 15, which is the same thing as x equals 15, except this will carry outside of the function. Well, that's it for now. I'll be doing some more screencast on pointers to elaborate and to extend upon what we've discussed today. But I really hope this made sense. I really would like your feedback in case something didn't make sense. So feel free to follow me on Twitter or just message me on Twitter at Joe Query. You can email me, joseph at vertstudios.com. And I'll do my best to explain any questions you might have. So thanks for watching, and good luck using pointers.